Hello and welcome to my tutorial how to edit and reframe 360 videos in Adobe Premiere Pro. This workflow tutorial can be seen as part 2 of my 360 camera tutorial series how to get the best out of your Insta360 ONE X2. The first part was about how to prepare your 360 camera and what are the best Insta360 ONE X2 video settings. The second part is about how to shoot to get the best looking footage and how to edit and reframe your Insta360 ONE X2 360 videos to get cinematic sequences. Enjoy part 2 and improve your 360 video skills. Before we start, once again the information. This workflow is not limited to the Insta360 ONE X2. This tutorial series can be applied to any 360 camera. I recommend you to watch part 1 to know which settings are necessary to get the best quality out of your Insta360 ONE X2. Now we continue with how to shoot to get the best looking footage. If you follow these basic rules, you can't do much wrong. Point 1. Although the Insta360 ONE X2 has an incredible video stabilization called flow state stabilization, you still have to make sure that you guide your camera as smooth as possible. If the camera shake is too high, it will also be noticeable in the 360 video in the form of blurred out of focus artifacts. Especially in low light conditions, this gets worse. So always make sure to guide your camera as smooth as possible, especially when the selfie stick is fully extended. Point 2. Always try to film in good lightning conditions. This is definitely the most important aspect for a good video quality. In low light conditions you have the problem that the video footage starts to get noisy and becomes pixelated. I recommend you to film with natural sunlight. There you will get the best results. Point 3. Prefer a simple environment and not a complex one. What does this mean? An example of a simple environment is a flat landscape with a blue sky. A complex environment is a forest with many details. The reason for this is the video compression. The simpler the environment, the more efficient the compression. In a complex environment, the details are compressed, which results in a more pixelated footage. Point 4. Don't get too close to objects, because then the stitching line will be visible. Always keep a distance of at least 30 cm, if possible. If you follow these basic rules, you will create high quality 360 videos, which we will optimize later in post-production. Of course, I know that it is not possible to follow all the rules, but the better you follow them, the better your footage will be. Now the fun part begins. Just start filming and get creative. Basically, you can do anything here. And that is exactly what is important. Just get creative yourself. Try out everything you can think of. I always personally try to find new creative ways to film unique 360 video sequences. Examples and ideas how to use your 360 camera you can find in my video 21 creative 360 video ideas and 11 unique Insta360 ONE X2 ideas. Check them out! After you finished filming, the post-processing begins, which is at least as important as the shooting. Here you can bring out the true potential of your 360 camera. There are many ways to edit and reframe your Insta360 ONE X2 footage. Either you edit your footage on your smartphone with the Insta360 app, with Insta360 Studio on your PC, or as I prefer, with Adobe Premiere Pro and After Effects. To edit and reframe with Premiere Pro, you need to install Insta360 Studio. The Insta360 plugin for Adobe Premiere Pro and Final Cut Pro will be installed at the same time. The Insta360 plugin allows you to seamlessly import your Insta360 video material. Just open Premiere Pro, create a new project and import your Insta360 footage.
The Insta360 plugin stitches the two 180 degree raw video files together and creates a ready to import 360 video. If you click on the right mouse button and select the option Source Settings, you can adjust the parameters of your Insta360 footage. When you are not satisfied with the stitching, you can for example select the option Dynamic Stitching and Chromatic Calibration. I always use the basic settings without adjusting anything here. Before we start with the reframing and editing, two important steps are necessary, which I prefer and recommend. Step 1 is the frame rate. The imported material has a frame rate of 30 fps. I like to slow down the footage to 24 fps. This has the advantage that the video is 20% slower, which leads to smoother shots. With this method I created my Insta360 ONE X2 cinematic videos. To change the imported footage to 24 fps, you just have to right click on the file. Then click on Modify, Interpret Footage. There you activate the option Assume this frame rate and enter 24 fps. Step 2 is the creation of a proxy file. A proxy file is a low quality replacement of the original. The advantage of proxy files are that they are allow you to work faster without jerks. The original file has 5.7k. The proxy file is much smaller and more efficient. To create proxy files you need to right click on the footage and select the item Proxy. Create proxies. The default settings with H.264 low resolution proxy are the best in my opinion. Click OK and the media encoder opens to render the proxy files. Before the media encoder starts rendering, press pause to stop the process. You have to adjust the frame rate of the proxy files also to 24 fps, otherwise the proxy files are not synchronized with the original files. So click on the footage and select the option Interpret footage. Change the frame rate to 24 fps here as well. Then click on the item Reset status and click on the green arrow to restart the rendering of the proxy files. The media encoder will then create your proxy files. After the rendering is finished, you can close the media encoder. In order to edit raw Insta360 footage, you must first create a sequence that serves as editing workspace. To do this, click on File, New, Sequence. I always use the DSLR 1080p24 sequence as preset here. At sequence name, you can give the sequence a name of your choice. Click OK and the sequence will be created. To get the maximum quality, I would recommend you to change the resolution to 4K. Click on Sequence, Sequence Settings and change the frame size to 3840 and 2160. Now you have made all the presettings and the material can be imported into the sequence. Drag and drop the RAW360 video into the sequence. Premiere Pro will ask you if you want to adjust the sequence settings to match the footage settings. Click on Keep existing settings here. In the preview window you will now see the 360 video. Click on the toggle proxy symbol to activate the proxy file. The resolution decreases, but with the proxy file displayed a smooth workflow is possible. Now we start with the creative post-production part, which is reframing. To reframe your Insta360 360 degree footage, you need the third-party plugin GoPro FX Reframe. This plugin can be downloaded and installed for free on the GoPro website. After you installed the plugin, search for GoPro FX Reframe in the Effects tab. Via drag and drop, you can apply the plugin to your 360 video. Under the projection option, set the resolution to GoPro 4K 16-9, so that the reframing resolution matches the sequence resolution. 
With the cursor, you can change the perspective in the Workspace Preview window. Make sure that the proxy file is active to enjoy a smoother workflow. At the side edges, you can change the rotation. With the zoom and lens parameter, you can influence the focal length and the lens distortion. I like to set both to 50 at the beginning to get a wide angle perspective, which is my basis for further reframing steps. Now all options are open to you and this is where you have to try out and test a lot yourself. I myself always test new things and create different reframing versions to compare them. There is no right or wrong here, do what you like. To show you an example, I'll recreate the following sequence from my video Insta360 ONE X2 Cinematic Part 2. In this example, I guided my Insta360 ONE X2 close to a tree trunk and then close above the ground. The selfie stick also made it possible to fly through an opening. Now I'll show you how I created this scene with my reframing technique. In the first step, I set the lens curve parameter to 60 to compensate the lens distortion even more. I leave the zoom factor at 50, which gives me an ultra wide angle shot. That is optimal for this shot. In the next step, I move the perspective down and play back the video, where I start to pull the camera down. I stop and trim the video. I don't need the footage before that. Now I activate the keyframe options with the stopwatch symbol. I do this for the parameters pan, tilt and rotate, because I want to change these parameters during the sequence. Now I play the video until I'm just before I start leaving the tree trunk. I keep the direction of the perspective, I only change the rotation. All the keyframes are generated automatically. When I now play back the video from the first to the second keyframe, I get the dynamic rotation. In the next step, I look for the point just after leaving the tree trunk. Here I change the perspective so that the camera angle looks forward. I also like to add a slight roll angle. This adds dynamic to the sequence and makes it look like you are flying a FPV drone. Just before I fly through the tripod, I set another keyframe and adjust the perspective. After the tripod, I set another keyframe. At the end, I tilt up the angle of the view to represent the end of the sequence. The remaining part which I do not need, I cut away. When the entire sequence is played, the result looks good, but it can still be optimized. Currently, it looks jerky and not smooth. This can be easily changed. Just select all keyframes and choose the option Continuous Bercier. If you look at the footage again, you will notice a clear difference. I would also recommend you to deactivate the option Motion Blur in the Advanced Controls. This can lead to blurred images. Now the reframing is complete. You can reframe all your footage as I showed you and create creative shots. You can then merge them into a whole movie and also add music. At the end there is still the color grading missing. Here I make it easy for myself. I click on the tab Color and immediately the sliders for color adjustment appear. At Input LUT I select my own created Gimbal Guru Cinematic LUT. This LUT immediately adjusts the colors and gives the video a cinematic look. In this example, the sequence is a bit too dark, so I increase the exposure with the slider. By deactivating and activating the Lumetri color effect, 
you can see the difference. If you also want to create your Insta360 ONE X2 videos with the Gimbal Guru Cinematic LUT, check out the link in the description. The last step is the export. To do this, click on File, Export, Media. The export window will open, where I recommend you the following settings. Select H.264 and YouTube 4K Ultra HD. Make sure the export video and export audio options are selected. Click on Match Source to apply the sequence settings for the export. In the bitrate settings, the bitrate encoding is already preset with VBR one pass. Also, the target bitrate with 40 megabits per second is fine. We leave these settings as they are. Activate the option Use Maximum Render Quality and select Entire Sequence for the source range. Then click on Export to render your final movie. After the render process is complete, you can upload your video to YouTube or use it for private purposes. And this was my complete workflow tutorial. How I reframe and edit my Insta360 footage in Adobe Premiere Pro. In the video description I have linked you all the important informations. There you find a special Gimbal Guru offer link for the Insta360 ONE X2. A link where you can purchase Adobe Premiere Pro. The link to the Gimbal Guru Cinematic LUT and much more. My goal is to continue to create high quality videos and bring you knowledge. I would be happy if you support me with a subscription. Then you will never miss a Gimbal Guru tutorial about 360 video editing, 360 cameras and much more. Stop overthinking and start creating.